Hello, this is David Tuchel with a Hariba Scientific Raman Academy video, this one on exploring resonance Raman spectroscopy. And we'll start by considering the fundamentals of uh, Raman scattering through this molecular energy level diagram. And uh, what you see here are the ground and first excited electronic states E sub 0 and E sub 1 respectively. And within each electronic state you have a manifold of vibrational states and that for uh, for the ground state, the ground electronic state is shown here as nu sub 0, nu sub 1, nu sub 2, nu sub 3, etc. So if we consider elastic light scattering, also known as Rayleigh scattering, you can have a molecule interact with an incident photon uh, such that the molecule is driven to a virtual state whereupon it relaxes to the same uh, ground state, the original state, there is no exchange in energy and so therefore the scattered photon is at the same energy, frequency, and wavelength as that of the incident photon. Now in Raman scattering, normal Raman scattering or non-resonant Raman scattering as I describe it here, the molecule can interact with a photon, be driven to this virtual state whereupon it can, a quantum of energy can be transferred from the incident photon to the molecule such that the molecule ends in the first excited vibrational state and the photon that scattered then has an energy and a frequency less than that of the incident photon dictated by the difference in the uh, frequencies and energies of the ground and the first excited vibrational state. So the Raman scattering then occurs at energies and frequencies lower than that of the incident light and at wavelengths longer than that of the incident light. Now resonance Raman scattering uh, is basically different insofar as the excitation wavelength can couple to uh, an excited electronic state. So if you have an absorption uh, such that the exciting laser wavelength that you're using matches that of that uh, absorption band, uh, you can then drive the molecule not to a virtual state but to an excited electronic state whereupon the molecule can relax again to the uh, first excited vibrational state just as in normal Raman scattering. But in this case uh, the intensity of the vibrational modes and only those vibrational modes associated with this electronic transition can undergo very, very strong enhancement uh, of their signal strength. That is, as much as 10 to the 6 uh, enhancement of that signal. And that's one of the key benefits of resonance Raman spectroscopy, in particular being able to detect species in, say, solution at very low concentration because of this great enhancement. And again, only those vibrational modes that are uh, associated with this electronic transition undergo resonant enhancement. Uh, those vibrational modes that are not coupled to the electronic transition appear just as they do in a normal Raman spectrum. So let's take a look at resonance Raman enhancement of overtones and in this case of an osmium uh, hexabromide compound. On the left you see an absorption spectrum in electronic absorption spectrum from 400 to 600 nanometers and we see that there's an absorption band at 455 nanometers. At 477 nanometers there's very little if any absorption occurring at all and so when excited at 477 nanometers uh, we see basically uh, just the fundamental vibrational modes. We see the symmetric stretch at nu1 mode at 210 wave numbers. Well, we can also see the first overtone here. But what a difference if we then excite at 455 nanometer light, which uh, is coupling into this electronic transition. And so now we see all of these overtones. And by the way, this is an old, uh, old piece of work, an old publication. Uh, from decades ago, which is why you see the spectrum plotted uh, in those days in the same fashion for infrared absorption and Raman scattering from higher to lower wave number. At any rate, 
you see this ringing, if you will, of the of uh, two new one, three new one, four new one, etc., uh, because of the enhancement of these particular modes and their association or coupling with that electronic transition. So this is a real good indication then of uh, resonance enhancement when one sees these overtones. Now another consequence of resonance enhancement is that by using different excitation wavelengths the spectra can appear different. So here you see spectra of acetaminophen. The lower spectrum excited at 532 uh, nanometer light and uh, I'm sure many of you have acquired spectra of acetaminophen and so this is quite familiar to you. So that at 229 nanometer excitation those vibrational modes that are associated with the electronic transition undergo a very significant enhancement uh, and so with their greater intensities relative to those of all the other modes that are not coupled to the electronic transition uh, the spectrum excited at 229 can then appear quite different from that uh, excited at 532 even though they're exactly the same compound and sample even. So let's take a look at some other compounds uh, these nice dyes, pentacene and rubrine, they're deeply colored and so they have absorption in the visible and uh, they do have that absorption because of their conjugated, these aromatic rings and the conjugation of the uh, aromatic uh, bonds here and so you see that we should see uh, basically ring modes and carbon hydrogen bending modes and only of course CH stretching associated with uh, aromatics because there's no aliphatic uh, functional groups here. So when we look at a spectrum of uh, pentacene excited at 633 we see uh, bands associated with the groups that I've just mentioned here. At 1597 we have a nice very intense ring mode but then we also have all these Raman bands here out at much higher wave number where we should expect to see nothing at all. Uh, there are no fundamental vibrational modes in this region for which we can account for these bands. These are in fact the overtones and combination modes uh, just as we saw for the osmium compound. So if we expand our scale we can see a very rich structure of uh, these uh, uh, overtones and combination modes. The band at 3194 uh, can be reasonably attributed to the aromatic C8 stretching, but all of this is basically enhancement of these overtones and combinations. So if we look at a series of uh, resonance Raman spectra of pentacene, we find something very interesting. Uh, we see basically similarities in the spectra when excited at 405 and 473 which are different from those spectra excited at 532 and 633 and at 785 there's no absorption and so here is our normal Raman scattering and the spectra appear different again because of the significant enhancement of the vibrational modes associated with the electronic transition and so when we look at for example the 532 and 633 spectra we have a certain relative intensities of the 1158 and 1176 that are paired fairly nicely and you see how that relative intensity changes when excited at 405 and 473. That is to say the 1158 band is weaker in these spectra relative to the 1176. Also you see this band at about 1371 wave numbers which is prominent again in, in these spectra uh, but not so much uh, if at all in the 405 and 473 nanometer excitation and you can see a difference then also in the uh, relative intensities of the band at uh, 1597 as well. So the key here is that by changing the excitation wavelength we're clearly going from no absorption at all to coupling into one electronic transition over this range of 532 and 633 and then into another electronic transition 
uh, using 405 and 473 as evidenced by the differences in these uh, uh, different relative intensities of the Raman bands. If we look at rubrine now, what we see is that 785 and 633, we have fairly similar spectra, so it appears that both of these spectra are not in resonance. However, the spectrum obtained at 405 nanometer excitation is clearly different from uh, those at um, uh, 633 and 785 nanometer excitation. In particular, look at the relative intensities of these bands here. Notice how the uh, 1299 band is more intense than that at 1432 when excited at 405 quite different from uh, what we see here at 633. And also the emergence and the increase in intensity of this 1519 band and the emergence at 1616. So we have then basically an indication of those vibrational modes and if we assign the symmetry species of the modes we can tell something about the uh, the electronic transition that's occurring at 405 but we see that there's a resonance enhancement here because of the difference with respect to the 633 and the 785. Also, you notice that there are no Raman, I'm not showing Raman spectra from 473 or 532, and that's because of the uh, photoluminescence that occurred, which completely overwhelmed the Raman scattering. So that remember, if you excite with a wavelength for which you are coupling into an absorption, then clearly you can always uh, uh, be faced with photoluminescence as well as resonance Raman enhancement. And so in this case, the photoluminescence uh, from the other wavelengths just totally overwhelmed the Raman scattering, even the resonance enhanced Raman scattering. So let's conclude with uh, three important points about resonance Raman spectroscopy. And the first is that resonance Raman scattering from vibrational modes coupled to an electronic transition can be enhanced by as much as 10 to the 6th relative to that of normal Raman scattering. Also vibrational overtones and combination modes can appear in resonance Raman spectra whereas they're frequently absent from normal Raman spectra. And finally, the relative band intensities of resonantly enhanced and normal Raman spectra can appear quite different because of the selective enhancement of only those vibrational modes coupled to the electronic transition. I hope that this little introduction or exploration of resonance Raman spectroscopy was helpful to you and I appreciate uh, the time that you uh, have given to uh, watching this video.